228 left at San Francisco International Airport. The airplane was destroyed by impact forces and fire. Three of the 291 passengers were fatally injured and approximately 199 were transported to hospitals with injuries. Three of the four flight crew and 10 of the 12 cabin crew members were injured. The flight was a regularly scheduled passenger flight from Seoul, Korea, operated under the provisions of 14 CFR Part 129. The departure and en route portions of the flight were routine. Flight time was approximately 10.5 hours. The airplane entered the San Francisco terminal area at approximately 11.15 local time via a standard arrival route. The weather at the time was clear with light winds from the south-southwest. The flight was vectored for a visual approach to runway 28 left. The glide slope portion of the instrument landing system was out of service due to a runway construction project and the pilots were aware of that information via an FAA notice to airmen. The pilot flying in the left seat was a captain transitioning from the Airbus 320 to the Boeing 777 and had a total time of about 9,700 hours and less than 45 hours in the 777. This was his first trip into San Francisco in that type aircraft. His last flight to San Francisco was in 2004 in a Boeing 747. The pilot monitoring in the right seat was an instructor pilot, newly certified as an instructor, with a total time of about 12,000 hours and approximately 3,200 hours in the Boeing 777. He had been into San Francisco many times recently. One of the two relief first officers was seated in the jump seat. To help understand the sequence of events, here is a view of the left side of a 777 panel. The pilot's primary flight display, or PFD, is on the lower left of the screen and zoomed in above right. The top of the PFD contains the flight mode annunciation, or FMA area, which shows the current auto throttle, roll, and pitch modes. Airspeed is displayed on the vertical tape on the left side of the PFD and altitude and vertical speed on the right side. The mode control panel, or MCP, where the pilot makes entries to the auto flight system is on the glare shield, circled here. Entries to select desired airspeed, altitude, vertical speed, and heading are made on this panel. It also includes switches to select the various autopilot flight director system, or AFDS, modes. Autopilot and auto throttle disconnect switches are also located on the control yoke and throttles, respectively. Please note that these graphics are for demonstration only and do not necessarily reflect the exact status of the accident airplane. After reporting the airport in sight, the flight was cleared for a visual approach on a 14-mile straight-in final. ATC instructed the crew to maintain 180 knots until 5 miles from the airport and there was no altitude restriction imposed. In this next sequence of slides, you will see imaginary lines for viewer reference relative to the normal glide path extending from run runway 28 left, as well as mode control panel entries and status in the brown box, flight mode annunciation status in the black box, and the airspeed and altitude from the primary flight display in the dark blue box. As the airplane passed over the Dumbarton Bridge, descending through about 4,800 feet, on the extended center line of the runway. Indicated airspeed was 210 knots. Descent rate was about 1,300 feet per minute. The AFDS was configured such that the autopilot was engaged and selected to flight level change mode, descending to a selected altitude of 1,800 feet, which was the normal final approach fix, or FAF, altitude. The auto throttle was engaged in hold mode with the thrust levers at idle. This is an expected configuration to descend to FAF altitude. Shortly after, the crew switched the autopilot to vertical speed mode with a commanded descent rate of 1,000 feet per minute, and the auto throttle switched to speed mode with a selected airspeed of 172 knots. That rate of descent was not fast enough to remain on the normal glide path and the airplane diverged above the normal angle. Landing gear was extended, and the descent rate was briefly selected to 1,500 feet per minute, then back to 1,000. 
At this point, the airplane was about six miles from the runway at about 175 knots and descending through 2,400 feet well above glide paths. As the airplane approached the San Mateo Bridge, which is about at the FAF or five mile point, the MCP select altitude was changed to 3,000 feet to prepare in case a go around is needed, which is a normal action on approach. Shortly afterward, the airspeed select was set to 152 knots. The airspeed was still well above the desired glide path. At an altitude of about 1,600 feet, and 3.5 miles from the runway, data indicates the flight level change switch on the mode control panel was activated, changing the autopilot and auto throttle operating mode. Flight level change is an autopilot mode normally used to climb or descend to selected altitudes during the climb out, cruise, and initial descent phases of flight. It is not recommended to use flight level change past the final approach fix according to the Boeing flight crew training manual. As a result, the AFDS began to command a pitch up and power increase as it attempted to climb the airplane to 3,000 feet at 152 knots, as had been previously selected on the MCP. The pilot responded by disconnecting the autopilot and manually retarding the throttles to idle. In this configuration, the autopilot was not commanding the airplane but the system made inputs to the flight directors in flight level change mode. The auto throttles transitioned to hold mode with the thrust levers at the idle position due to the manual override. These modes were enunciated on the FMA as you see here. In this configuration, the auto throttles would not be controlling airspeed. However, the airspeed select was then changed to 137. At about five seconds later, flight recorder data show that the left side flight director was switched off, but the right side remained on. About 1.4 miles from the runway and 500 feet altitude, the airplane descended through the normal glide path and was passing through the desired speed of 137 knots, but rapidly decelerating. On this slide, I've removed the MCP graphic as no further changes are made and to better show the Precision Approach Path Indicator or PAPI light graphic by the runway. The pitch attitude steadily increased as the pilot applied back pressure to the column to attempt to maintain the glide path per the PAPI uh, indicators, but there was no mention of the decaying speed on the cockpit voice recorder at this time. Thrust levers remained at idle as the airplane continued to lose airspeed and sink below the glide path. 24 seconds from impact, the airplane was about 0.9 miles from the runway and 300 feet altitude. The airplane continued to descend well below the Pappy glide path, as indicated by the four red lights, decelerating through 120 knots and at a pitch attitude of about 7 degrees nose up. About 11 seconds prior to impact, an audible alert consistent with the low airspeed caution was recorded. Three seconds later, just below 100 feet above the water, the throttle levers were moved fully forward to initiate a go-around, followed four to five seconds later by stick shaker activation and a verbal call to go-around. But the action was too late and the main gear and underside of the aft fuselage struck the seawall. The lowest recorded airspeed was 103 knots, which was about 34 knots below the desired airspeed. Due to the potentially disturbing nature of the surveillance video we are about to show, we will pause for a moment to let attendees exit the room if they choose. Go ahead. The tail of the aircraft broke off at the aft pressure bulkhead. The airplane slid along the runway before the fuselage lifted into an approximate 30 degree nose down angle and pivoted about 330 degrees 
before coming to rest off the left side of the runway. Evacuation of the airplane was initiated by passengers and crew. Fire initiated within the right engine, which was adjacent to the right side of the fuselage, and penetrated into the cargo compartment and cabin, and eventually vented through the airplane roof. Two slide rafts inflated within the cabin during the impact sequence, temporarily trapping and injuring two flight attendants. A fire vehicle rolled over the victim forward of the left wing approximately 23 minutes after the accident. The investigation to date has not identified any anomalies with the airplane prior to impact, although airplane system testing and performance evaluation is ongoing.